The Roman Legacy from the Founding of Rome to the Fall of Constantinople. Segment 1. The Founding of Rome and the Establishment of the Republic. The history of ancient Rome begins with its legendary founding in 753 BC by Romulus, who, according to Roman mythology, was the son of the god Mars and the priestess Rhea Silvia. Romulus is said to have founded Rome on the Palatine Hill after the infamous act of killing his twin brother Remus during a dispute over where their city should be located. According to legend, Romulus and Remus were raised by a she-wolf after being abandoned on the banks of the Tiber River, a story that has become a symbol of Rome itself. The early period of Roman history is marked by the rule of a succession of seven kings. These monarchs, starting with Romulus and ending with Tarquinius Superbus, played critical roles in laying the foundational structures of Roman society and its institutions. Under the kings, Rome grew from a small settlement of huts into a city that was structured with temples, markets, and a political system that included religious and civic duties intertwined. For example, the construction of the Cloaca Maxima, one of the world's earliest sewage systems, is attributed to King Tarquinius Priscus. The reign of the last king, Tarquinius Superbus, was characterized by tyranny and abuse of power. His expulsion in 510 BC marked a significant turning point in Roman history. The ousting of Tarquinius Superbus was precipitated by the infamous rape incident involving his son, Sextus Tarquinius, and Lucretia, a noblewoman whose tragic fate incited the Roman populace against the monarchy. Lucius Junius Brutus, one of Rome's first consuls, played a key role in establishing the Republic by leading the revolt that ousted the last king. The regal period in Rome denotes the initial phase of the city's history, characterized by its legendary founding and the reign of kings. The end of the regal period led to the foundation of the Roman Republic, fundamentally changing the course of Roman governance. Segment 2 The Roman Republic until 200 BC Expansion and Conflict The Roman Republic, established in 509 or 510 BC, following the expulsion of the last Roman king, marked a new era of Roman governance. Initially, the Republic faced numerous challenges from neighboring Latin tribes and Etruscan cities. These early conflicts were crucial in consolidating Rome's power within the Italian peninsula and in forming the legendary Roman Legion, a citizen-soldier army that would become a cornerstone of Roman military might. The structure and discipline of the Roman Legion were crucial to Rome's military success. Each legionary was a Roman citizen, and their rigorous training and organization set them apart from other armies of the time. Throughout the 5th and 4th centuries BC, Rome engaged in a series of wars with neighboring tribes, including the Sabines, the Equi, and the Volsci. These wars were instrumental in expanding Roman territory and influence, and in integrating a wide range of peoples into the Roman domain, which was crucial for its expansion. The conquest of the Etruscan city of Vei in 396 BC, for instance, was a significant victory, doubling the territory under Roman control. Rome was sacked by the Gauls in 390 BC, an event that marked a critical point in the city's early history. This incident is often referred to as the Battle of the Allia, named after the river where the Roman forces met the Gauls, led by their chieftain Brennus. The sacking of Rome in 390 BC was a shocking event for the Romans and led to significant military reforms, including the construction of the Servian Wall to protect the city. As Rome's power grew, it increasingly came into conflict with other major powers in the Mediterranean, particularly the Greek city-states and the Hellenistic kingdoms that had emerged from the conquests of Alexander the Great. 
Rome's first major interaction with the Hellenistic world came during the Pyrrhic War, 280 to 275 BC, against King Pyrrhus of Epirus, whose costly victories against Rome gave rise to the term Pyrrhic victory. The expansion into the Greek sphere marked a new phase of Roman expansionism, leading to the First and Second Punic Wars against Carthage, a powerful city-state in North Africa. The First Punic War, 264 to 241 BC, began primarily over control of Sicily and ended with Rome's decisive victory, establishing Roman dominance over the island. The Second Punic War, 218 to 201 BC, however, was marked by the Carthaginian general Hannibal's extraordinary crossing of the Alps into Italy, bringing the war to the Roman heartland. Hannibal's crossing of the Alps with his war elephants is one of the most famous military feats in history. Despite facing tremendous challenges, including harsh weather and difficult terrain, he managed to bring his army into Italy, posing a significant threat to Rome. Despite initial successes and devastating battles such as Cannae, Hannibal was eventually repelled, and the war concluded with the Battle of Zama in 202 BC, where Scipio Africanus decisively defeated Hannibal, marking a turning point in Rome's history. The Battle of Zama was a decisive victory for Rome, where Scipio Africanus used innovative tactics like manipulation of the elephants and flexible formation to defeat Hannibal. This battle effectively ended the Second Punic War and solidified Rome's dominance over Carthage. By the end of the Second Punic War, Rome had not only secured its position as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean, but also laid the groundwork for future expansion into the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond. Segment 3 The Roman Republic until 27 BC Transition to Empire The period following the Second Punic War marked a significant transformation in the Roman Republic both internally and externally. With the victory over Carthage in 201 BC Rome had established itself as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean over the next two centuries, Rome continued its expansion, conquering territories in the eastern Mediterranean, including Greece, Asia Minor, and parts of North Africa. The increasing wealth and expansion brought significant internal challenges, including political corruption, social inequality, and a series of civil wars. The influx of wealth from the provinces exacerbated the divide between the rich and the poor, leading to social unrest and the rise of populist leaders such as the Gracchi brothers, Tiberius and Gaius, who in the second century BC attempted to implement land reforms and other populist measures to address these issues. Their efforts, however, led to increased polarization and violence, setting a precedent for the political instability that would characterize the late Republic. The late Republic also witnessed the rise of strong military leaders who commanded personal loyalty from their troops, a deviation from the traditional Republican values. This era saw the emergence of figures like Marius, Sulla, Pompey and Julius Caesar, each of whom played pivotal roles in the Republic's politics through military conquests and political maneuvering. Gaius Marius introduced significant military reforms, including the recruitment of landless citizens, which changed the Roman army from a semi-professional force to a more professional one. This move increased his soldiers' loyalty to him personally, rather than to the state. Lucius Cornelius Sulla was the first Roman general to march on Rome and seize power by force. His dictatorship beginning in 82 BC was marked by proscriptions, a series of political purges where his enemies were executed or exiled and their properties confiscated. A triumvirate refers to a political regime dominated by three powerful individuals. The first triumvirate, unofficial and informal, 
was formed in 60 BC between Julius Caesar, Pompey and Crassus. This alliance was aimed at overcoming the senatorial and elite opposition by pooling their resources and influence, but fell apart after the death of Crassus and the growing rivalry between Caesar and Pompey. Crassus led a disastrous military expedition against the Parthian Empire. In 53 BC, he sought military glory and riches by invading Parthia, but met a formidable enemy. The Roman forces were decisively defeated at the Battle of Carrhae. The rivalry between the leaders often resulted in civil wars, most notably the conflict between Julius Caesar and Pompey. Julius Caesar's crossing of the Rubicon River in 49 BC marked the beginning of a civil war that ultimately led to his dictatorship and the end of the republican form of government. Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March in 44 BC was a desperate attempt by some senators to restore the Republic, but instead it plunged Rome into further strife. Caesar's reforms as dictator included the Julian calendar, which reformed the Roman calendar and is the precursor to the modern Gregorian calendar. His centralization of power set the precedent for the later Roman emperors, the power struggle that followed Caesar's death led to the formation of the Second Triumvirate in 43 BC by his heir Octavian, later Augustus, Mark Antony and Lepidus. Unlike the first, this was a legal institution which divided the Roman territories among the three for the purpose of restoring order and exacting vengeance on their mutual enemies. This period was marked by its own series of conflicts and political purges. The final phase of the Republic concluded with the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, where Octavian decisively defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra, leading to their suicides and Octavian's undisputed control over Rome. The Battle of Actium was a naval confrontation where Octavian's fleet, commanded by Agrippa, defeated the combined forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. This battle effectively ended the Roman Republic and cleared the path for Octavian to become the first Roman Emperor. In 27 BC, Octavian was granted the title Augustus by the Senate, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. This transition was characterized by the establishment of a more centralized and autocratic form of governance under Augustus, signaling a new era in Roman history. Segment 4 The Roman Empire From Augustus to the Fall of the Western Part The Roman Empire inaugurated by Augustus in 27 BC, marked a new era of stability and expansion for Rome. Augustus, the first emperor, implemented profound reforms in administration and governance, stabilizing the empire after centuries of republic turmoil. He established a system where the emperor had supreme power while maintaining the facade of republican institutions. Under Augustus and his successors, the empire expanded to its greatest territorial extent, encompassing the entire Mediterranean basin and much of Western Europe. The Pax Romana, or Roman peace, a period during the first and second centuries AD, saw prosperity, cultural flourishing, and significant architectural achievements like the Colosseum and Pantheon. Built under the Flavian emperors, the Colosseum could hold up to 80,000 spectators and was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles, such as animal hunts, mock sea battles, and executions. Following the establishment of the empire, Nero, one of Rome's most infamous emperors, came to power in AD 54. Despite being credited with diplomatic and cultural achievements, his reign is often overshadowed by accusations of tyranny. The Great Fire of Rome in AD 64 is one of the most notorious events of his rule. Although Tacitus and other historians suggest Nero was not in Rome when the fire started and took measures to help the city recover, rumors persisted that he had the city set ablaze to make room for his grandiose architectural projects. 
This event exemplifies the complexity and often vilified character of Nero's rule, marking a significant chapter in the history of the Roman Empire. However, the third century witnessed increased pressures on the empire. Economic troubles, military defeats, and administrative challenges led to the crisis of the third century, where the empire nearly collapsed under the strain of invasions, civil wars, and economic downturn. In response, Emperor Diocletian ruled. 284 to 305 AD undertook comprehensive reforms. He divided the empire in 286 AD into the Eastern and Western Roman empires, each ruled by a co-emperor under the Tetrarchy system. The Tetrarchy divided the empire into two distinct and separate administrations, each led by a senior emperor and a junior emperor. These pairs were known as Augusti and Caesaris. Diocletian himself took charge of the Eastern Roman Empire as an Augustus, with Galerius as his Caesar. In the West, Maximian was appointed as the other Augustus, with Constantius Chlorus as his Caesar. This was intended to make governance more efficient and manageable. Diocletian's reforms also included price controls to curb inflation and attempts to strengthen the economy. Diocletian's retirement and the subsequent rise of Constantine the Great brought further significant changes. Constantine, who ruled from 306 to 337 AD, established Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, in 330 AD as a new Rome on the site of Byzantium. Constantinople's strategic location between Europe and Asia made it an ideal capital for the Eastern Empire, which increasingly diverged from the West in culture and interests. Constantine the Great was also the first Roman Emperor to convert to Christianity. His Edict of Milan in 313 AD granted religious tolerance throughout the Empire and played a crucial role in the spread of Christianity. The division of the Roman Empire into East and West was finalized upon the death of Emperor Theodosius I in 395 AD. Theodosius was the last emperor to rule both the eastern and western halves of the empire as a unified state. His policies and leadership had managed to maintain a semblance of unity, but upon his death, the empire was officially divided between his two sons. The western Roman Empire continued to face mounting difficulties, including economic decline and military setbacks. One of the most symbolic events of its deterioration was the sack of Rome by the Visigoths under King Alaric in 410 AD. It was the first time in 800 years that the city had fallen to a foreign enemy. This event marked a turning point in the decline of the Western Roman Empire and shocked the ancient world, dealing a significant psychological blow to the prestige of Rome. The final blow came in the form of invasions by various Germanic tribes and the Huns, led by Attila. Known as the Scourge of God, Attila led the Huns in numerous invasions across Europe. His campaigns contributed to the weakening of the Western Roman Empire, though he never managed to capture Rome itself. The destabilizing invasions culminated in 476 AD, when the last Roman Emperor of the West, Romulus Augustulus, was deposed by the Germanic chieftain Odoacer. This event is traditionally marked as the end of the Western Roman Empire, although the Eastern Roman Empire, or later described as the Byzantine Empire, would continue for another thousand years, preserving and transforming the Roman heritage. This empire, for which we have only used the name Byzantium since modern times, was also not the result of a division of the Roman Empire, because this empire was never divided. Its emperors could trace themselves back in unbroken tradition to Caesar and Augustus. Indeed, some of its institutions and traditions reached even further back to the beginnings of the Roman Republic. And so it was also natural that the Byzantines felt themselves to be Romans and labeled themselves as such. But every inhabitant of this empire, whether in the east or west, north or south, 
felt himself to be a Roman, a Romanus, or, as a Greek would have put it, a Romaios. Segment 5 Post-Western Empire Era and the Reign of Justinian I After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, the Eastern Roman Empire continued to thrive under the rule of a series of capable emperors. The most significant of these was Justinian I, who reigned from 527 to 565 AD. His ambitious rule was characterized by a determined effort to restore the Roman Empire to its former territorial glory, alongside significant cultural, legal and architectural achievements. Justinian's reign is perhaps best known for his military campaigns to reconquer former Roman territories in the West. He viewed the reconquests as a divine mission to restore Roman authority over the lost Western provinces. The general Belisarius was one of his most capable military commanders, playing a crucial role in these efforts. Belisarius's campaign successfully recaptured large parts of North Africa from the Vandals in 533 AD, followed by significant parts of Italy from the Ostrogoths, including a dramatic retaking of Rome in 536 AD. Belisarius was also instrumental in the temporary reconquest of parts of Spain from the Visigoths, further demonstrating Justinian's expansive ambitions. Although the Gothic Wars, 535 to 554 AD, were ultimately successful, they left Italy devastated and were extremely costly, both financially and in terms of manpower. Aside from his military campaigns, Justinian is also remembered for his extensive legal reforms and monumental building projects. He commissioned the codification of Roman laws, resulting in the Corpus Juris Civilis, which later served as a foundation for modern civil law systems. The Corpus Juris Civilis is considered one of Justinian's most enduring legacies, influencing not only Byzantine law, but also the legal traditions of many modern European nations. This legal codification was aimed at consolidating and clarifying centuries of Roman legal writings and imperial decrees into a coherent legal system. In the realm of architecture, Justinian's era witnessed the construction of the Hagia Sophia, an architectural marvel of its time and a symbol of Byzantine artistic and architectural prowess. Completed in 537 AD in Constantinople, it remained the world's largest cathedral for nearly a thousand years and is still considered one of the most important examples of Christian architecture. Despite these successes, Justinian's reign was not without challenges. His efforts to restore the empire strained the imperial treasury and were met with resistance and difficulties, including prolonged warfare that left territories like Italy in ruin. Additionally, the empire faced internal unrest, most notably during the Nica riots of 532 AD and external threats from the Persians in the east. The Nica riots, which began as a chariot race dispute, escalated into a massive rebellion against Justinian's rule resulting in significant destruction in Constantinople and thousands of deaths. Justinian died in 565 AD, leaving behind a mixed legacy. His reign ultimately did not succeed in permanently restoring Roman authority in the West or in reversing the decline of imperial fortunes, but his legal and cultural contributions had a lasting impact on both Eastern and Western civilizations. Justinian's wife, Empress Theodora, also played a crucial role in his reign. She was a powerful and influential figure, advocating for women's rights and social reforms. Segment 6 End of Roman Legacy From Heraclius to the Fall of Constantinople Following the reign of Justinian I, the Byzantine Empire entered a transformative era 
under Emperor Heraclius I, 610-641 AD. Heraclius's reign was marked by his dramatic military campaigns against the Sassanid Persians, where he initially suffered devastating losses only to achieve a stunning comeback, reclaiming all lost territories by 627 AD. The Sasanian Persians did indeed besiege Constantinople as part of the Byzantine-Sasanian War of 602 to 628 AD. This siege took place in 626 AD and was a critical event during one of the last and most devastating conflicts between the Byzantine Empire and the Sasanian Empire. During the siege, the Sasanian Empire allied with the Avars and Slavs to launch a combined attack on Constantinople. The Persians and their allies attacked the city by both land and sea. However, despite their efforts and the severity of the attack, they were unable to breach the formidable Theodosian walls of Constantinople. These walls were a massive fortification that had protected the city successfully since their completion in the 5th century. However, his victories were overshadowed by the rise of Islam, with Arab forces quickly seizing much of the empire's southern provinces, including Syria, Palestine and eventually Egypt, crucial regions that had been integral to the empire's economy and defense. The empire's struggles with external threats were paralleled by significant cultural and intellectual activity, notably during the Macedonian Renaissance in the 9th and 10th centuries. This period, initiated under the Macedonian dynasty, witnessed a flourishing of arts and sciences, reviving classical learning and Christian theology. The reign of Basil II, 976 to 1025 AD, often called the Bulgar Slayer, was particularly notable for military conquests that expanded the empire's boundaries northward into Bulgaria and beyond, securing Byzantine influence in the Balkans. The religious landscape of the empire was dramatically altered by the Great Schism of 1054, which formalized the split between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. This division was rooted in doctrinal, political, and cultural differences that had evolved over centuries. The late 11th century brought new challenges with the arrival of the First Crusade. While initially requested by Emperor Alexios, the first Komnenos to aid against Turkish advances, the movement quickly evolved beyond Byzantine control, impacting the political landscape of the Near East. The Fourth Crusade's sack of Constantinople in 1204 was a disastrous blow to Byzantine prestige and power, leading to the establishment of the Latin Empire while the Byzantine government fled to Nicaea. In 1261, Michael VIII Palaiologos successfully recaptured Constantinople, marking a temporary restoration of the empire's fortunes. This period, however, was fraught with internal strife and external threats, including further clashes with Crusader states and the emerging threat of the Ottoman Turks. The empire's last centuries saw a gradual decline in territorial extent and political stability. The Byzantine Empire's final phase was characterized by desperate attempts to solicit Western aid against the Ottomans. The rise of the Ottoman Empire represented the most significant external threat to the Byzantine Empire during this period. The Ottomans gradually took over the remaining Byzantine territories in Anatolia and the Balkans, culminating in the siege and eventual capture of Constantinople in 1453.